Hello, I'm Dr. Jerry Paleo, the President and CEO of Change Management Solutions, and I'd like to welcome you to this video on four ways to identify the real problem and stop focusing on symptoms. Before we can get started on um, identifying a real problem, we have to be able to differentiate between a symptom and a problem. And here's three quick tips. Symptoms are usually things that we see. They're outward manifestations, whereas the problems that underline or are the foundation for those symptoms oftentimes can appear to be, well, invisible. It's why it's so difficult many times to create change in our life because we're focusing on changing the symptoms, but the symptoms are really indicative of an underlying problem or something that's holding us back. When you're trying to identify symptoms, you usually can identify a symptom by asking what questions. What is going on here? Whereas problems are really not identified by uh, answering what types of questions, but problems are identified by asking why. In other words, symptoms are nothing more than effects of underlying problems and problems therefore are the causes that manifest themselves or create the outward symptoms. So how exactly do you identify what the real problem is? One of the, one of the biggest challenges that many people have in not only their professional lives but also in their personal lives is that we tend to focus more on the outward symptoms but by doing so and not delving deeper, we can never identify what the real problem is. We might be able to alleviate issues surrounding symptoms, but they keep popping up in our lives because we've never dealt with the underlying problem. So that said, here are four ways that you can use to help identify the real problem in just about any situation. The first thing is you need to be observant. You need to observe what is happening. And in this situation, you should be very, very specific. Secondly, act like a journalist and ask questions. Never just look at things at face value. When you have a symptom or something that's going on in your life that you're not happy with, you need to ask more questions. What is going on? How is this happening? Why is this happening? Who is involved? Where is this happening? And then also you need to go beyond the obvious answers. We tend to give kind of knee jerk answers to many questions and go beyond that so that we're searching for more clues. Uh, one of the strategies that you can use is to ask why a minimum of three times. By asking why at least three times, you can dig down three additional levels. And then finally, you have to be able to take off the blinders and remove your assumptions about what is really going on. Now that seems like a lot. So I want to give you an example of a situation in which somebody is feeling stressed and burned out. The first thing that you need to do is to observe what is happening and be specific. Is it uh, that you're feeling stressed and burned out because you're working too many hours, let's say over 60 in a week? And then to be a journalist and ask questions, you start trying to understand why, there's that why again that's uh, indicative of a, an underlying problem, why you're working so many hours. For example, are you a perfectionist? And have you set unreasonably high but self-imposed expectations on what you can do? And then go beyond the obvious. Now, it sounds like if you recognize that you're a perfectionist, that, well, that's the root problem and that's what I have to deal with. But how is that perfectionism sticking in your life? What's causing it to be like glue in terms of the way that you're uh, doing your job and working too many hours, which is leaving you stressed and burned out? To go beyond the obvious in this situation, take a look at your self-talk. What are those tapes and loops that are in your head that tell you what uh, your standards and expectations are? And then finally, once you get to that and you can identify that maybe the, uh, let's say you're a perfectionist, if that's the, uh, what you believe is the root cause of your work overload, 
then you need to take off the blinders and remove assumptions about it. In other words, you're looking at your blueprint or your paradigm for what is good in this particular area. For example, are you working too much because you're a perfectionist and you believe that long work hours means that you're going to be getting more done? You see what I'm saying? To identify the real problem, once you've identified what the root cause and the problem is, then you can more proactively take steps to overcome that problem. If, for example, uh, you have work overload that's leading to your stress and burnout, and you just say, oh, I'm working too many hours, but you don't get to the root reason why you're working so many hours, you may cut back on the number of hours you work per week, but it's going to come out in some other way. And the stress, which is what your, your issue is, the stress will not go away because you have these unreasonable standards of being a perfectionist. And you have these the self-talk that keeps telling you, I need to work longer, longer, longer in order to work better. So you see what I'm saying? By just getting rid of the symptom, you're not going to really address the underlying problem, and it will literally rear its ugly head in some other type of a situation or through manifesting some other type of symptom. So the big trick with identifying the real problem in any situation is to remember it's time to dig deep. So probably G.K. Chesterton said it better than anybody. It isn't that they cannot find the solution. It is that they cannot see the problem. Identify the problem, and you're well on the way to identifying and creating a proactive solution. And you'll get rid of the symptoms, too. Good luck.